is Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. On today's program, I'll be teaching on the important subject of forgiveness. In the Gospels, Jesus said, whenever you stand praying, forgive so that your Father who is in heaven may forgive you. We are called to forgive others as freely as God has forgiven us. Join me for part four of the message, The Dangers of Unforgiveness. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. Ephesians chapter number four. So who is it in your life that you say, you know, Maybe the way I'm conducting myself, maybe the way I'm living my life, I'm such an irritant that it's, it's exasperating them. It's an irritant to them. Well, you need to back up. I doubt that's the Holy Spirit driving you that way. Let's look at verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger. Give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good and for building up as fits the occasion, so that it may give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Be kind, tender-hearted. Now see, I tell you all the things I did right and that impresses you. But when I tell you my mess up, see, that really helps you. So I'm going to help you, okay? But in order to do that, i got to be vulnerable. I remember one time, now believe it or not, Pastor Tom and Sharon had a tiff. I know y'all can't believe that, but she did something. I don't know what it was, but anyway, I'm, you know I'm teasing. So anyway, something went on. It was no big deal, but I mean, it was just kind of a, I didn't like the way that went. And so, of course, you know, I said in my heart, okay, Lord, I forgive. You said be quick to forgive. Don't let the sun go down in your wrath. I forgive. So I woke up in the middle of the night that night, and I was just laying there. I go, well, Lord, you know, I've forgiven her. You know that. How sanctimonious I am, I've forgiven her. And while I was laying there, he said this, but you're not kind or tenderhearted. You know how it is when the Lord talks to you. You're like, yeah, you're right on. And he said that to me. Every time I see that phrase, I think it's interesting, in connection to forgiveness, you really haven't forgiven if you're hard-hearted and if you're unkind. When you've really forgiven, you're kind one to another, tenderhearted. And, you know, sometimes what people do is they think, oh, I'll get even with them. I'm going to get even with them if it's the last thing I do. Well, what happens is sometimes in people's attempt to get even, they're hurting the situation. They're hurting themselves. You know, I'm going to get even. I'm going to do this and I'm going to get even. How many know hate mode doesn't work? Have you discovered that? Rage mode, that doesn't work. Paul said this. He said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Y'all, we have to be tenderhearted. We have to forgive. And we got to remember in the Bible, the gospels are packed full of people that suffered wrong. Jesus was crucified. How many know he never did anything wrong, but yet he was crucified, right? And then Jesus, he kind of floated this one by us. He said, now, if they hate me, They're going to hate you too. Now, here's what happens. When you're a believer, you're a bigger target than a non-believer. When you have the word of God in you, the Bible says that when the seed goes on the ground, immediately the birds came to take up the seed that was sown. So when you have a lot of seed, a lot of God's word in your heart, the enemy's going to show up. Those birds, the parable of the sower, they represent demonic powers. And the devil's coming to steal the word out of your heart. You're in a bigger battlefield than you think you are. You're in a spiritual warfare whether you think you are or not. 
Because see, it's not just about you, but the enemy wants to render you ineffective. And in military situations, a lot of times if we can wound a person, we've actually accomplished more than killing a person because if we wound a soldier, it's going to take about four or five other soldiers to care for that soldier. And in a sense, we're going to be preoccupied with taking care of the hurting rather than advancing forward. And you know, it's interesting when people get hurt, you know what they do? They immediately start spreading that out. They immediately let that root of bitterness start bringing other people in. Now, I've discovered this. I was a young pastor. I didn't want anybody to leave the church. Oh, my Lord, somebody left the church. You know, I discovered this a long time ago. There's only one thing worse than somebody unhappy leaving your church. That's when somebody unhappy stays at your church. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know that? That sounds harsh, but it's true. Because you got somebody, they're getting the word, they're enjoying the service, God's working in their life. Man, they love it. I'm getting fed. I'm in the place. I'm in that place called there. I'm where I need to be. And they probably are. And then they get around somebody else that's kind of, you know, discontented and what have you. And all of a sudden, that starts kind of getting on them. Be careful that you're not toxic, that you're not radiating the wrong thing out of your life. We need to be like Peter in Acts chapter 5. When people got around Peter, just the shadow of Peter, people started getting healed. What does that mean? He was so overflowing with the Holy Spirit, there was just like a presence around his life. But you know, there's a presence around a lot of people's life, and it's not the Holy Spirit. It's a very unholy spirit. Matter of fact, when they leave, the lights go up. When they leave, you can just sense the strife went right out the door with them. I'm covering this on a lot of different levels. One level is this, you need to forgive people. Another level we talk about would be you need to make sure you're not the perpetrator. You're not just exasperating people. You're not the burr under the saddle. Now, that doesn't mean you back off truth. That means the salt loses its savor. Jesus was straight up. Jesus cared about the hurting. But he could tell those that had an honest and sincere heart versus those that were really just trying to catch him in what he said, and they were just looking for ways to trip him up. So in the Gospels here, we see the importance. Jesus said temptations are going to come, but make sure you're not the one peddling the temptation. We need to live in such a way that our relatives see God in us, and it draws them to the Lord. We need to live in such a way that it's, they're not seeing a religious spirit. How many know when they're seeing the Holy Spirit in us? And that's what really matters. That's what's so important in our life. So let's go over to 1 John, would you? 1 John chapter number one. The good thing about this message is eventually you're going to need it. Correct? You can't say, yeah, I heard a message. I don't know how in the world that'll ever fit in my life, but it was a pretty good little message. No, this one will fit. This fits. This is a very now word that's very appropriate in our lives. 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 5, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So this is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Notice verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him, While we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Notice that phrase, fellowship with one another. Did you know God really wants the body of Christ to have fellowship with one another? Well, they don't believe the way I do. They don't see eye to eye with me. How many know they're still in the body of Christ? The kingdom is more than our camp. But notice this phrase, fellowship with one another, and we have fellowship with one another. In the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, I'm reading this because I want you to just notice the premium and the prize that the Lord looks on this phrase. Hear this, fellowship with one another. God wants us to have great fellowship with the body of Christ. God wants us to have great fellowship with believers and people that are around us. Now, notice over here in 
The second chapter in verse number 10, whoever says that he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Now think about that. Whoever says I'm in the light, but they hate their brothers. Be careful about that word. I hate them. Oh, I just hate them. You remember the devil is the biggest hater there is, and you got to be careful about that. And then the Bible says, whoever loves his brother abides in the light. Now, this is the promise. And in him, there is no cause for stumbling. Did you know whenever you're walking in the light and you're walking in love, there is no cause for you to stumble. There's nothing going to trip you up. Lord, I'm just going to walk in love on this situation. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So you got people that they're calling themselves believers, but they're hating people. I'm talking about a predetermined decision. I'll never talk to them the longest day I live. I'm not asking you to just constantly be second-guessing yourself. Maybe uh, there's some hatred in my heart. I'm just saying, period, Lord... If the reason why I have this aversion to this person is because there's some type of a root of bitterness, I judge myself on that. If the reason why it's like these polarized magnets that are polarized against one another, if it's because there's some type of animosity that I have, I take responsibility for that, Lord. I'm going to wrap this up. But I want you to remember the words of Jesus as he wrapped this parable up. He talked about you need to forgive from your heart. In fact, let's go back and read that. Matthew chapter 18. We're going to wrap up here. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 35. So also your heavenly Father will do to every one of you. What will he do to every one of you? He'll deliver you to the tormentors. You'll be miserable. You'll be tormented. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart. And who is it that you have a temptation not to forgive? Brothers, sisters in Christ. Maybe it's literally a brother. I'm going to say this and I'll wrap up. Years ago, I went and saw a man at the hospital. Somebody had asked me, go see him. It was Frosty Peak. It was his father-in-law. He said, would you please come see my father-in-law? Because he didn't have much time to live. And this man, I believe he was in his 90s. And I was talking to him. I said, you know, we're going to pray together. I said, but I always like to cover this. Remember in the Lord's Prayer where Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against anybody that you'll be forgiven. I said, you know, is there anybody you need to forgive? And I remember he looked at me and he goes, you know, when you're as old as I am, all your enemies are already dead. (laughs) I've outlived them. Now, here's what I want to say. You know the best way to outlive an enemy, outlast an enemy, outlove an enemy. I love them. That doesn't mean you condone what they're doing and you're going to help them. You're going to help fund their drug addiction. You're going to help fund their alcoholism and their gambling habit. I'm not suggesting that. But I'm saying from your heart, you're not operating out of hate towards them. You're operating out of love. Thanks for joining me today. It's so important to remember to live a life of forgiveness towards others. It's been said, if you want to live a miserable life, just live a life of bitterness. Ephesians 4 reads, get rid of all bitterness. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.